Question is from McFlex. What are the <laughs> benefits of strength training when battling depression and anxiety? Oh, wow. So um, I, I, first I want to preface this by saying that we're not um, doctors uh, yeah, or therapists. Um, but I'm going to speak from just experience from working with clients and also working with uh, clients, doctors. For you know, I train clients for years, and oftentimes when they had a situation pop up um, that would come up in their questionnaire, I would contact their doctor, and then we would kind of work together. Now, the studies are pretty clear now that any kind of physical activity or exercise has a very positive effect on anxiety and low to moderate uh, types of depression. In fact, in head-to-head -head comparisons against some of the most popular anti-depressant uh, uh, medications, exercise is as good in the medium term. And in the long term, some studies even say that exercise uh, is more effective. So it's definitely something that is extremely effective. Now, the problem, of course, is if I'm depressed and anxious, the last thing I want to do is go exercise. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, like, which one do I do first? Like, I got to get rid of this, and this is how I get rid of it. But now, because I feel this way, I don't want to go exercise. So that's the hard part. But let's just say that you can will yourself to get to a gym or start being exercised. Number one, any type of activity should have a, as long as it's appropriate, should have a positive effect on both anxiety and depression. That being said, I will make the case that strength training is the best form of exercise for these things for a few different reasons. One, resistance training has, when done properly, has a very positive effect on hormones. And we know the role that hormones play in how we feel. So in men, resistance training has been shown to raise low levels of testosterone. Low levels of testosterone definitely can cause uh, depression or anxiety in men. In women, resistance training um, it, when done appropriately, is a more effective way of balancing out your progesterone and estrogen balance, which when that's out, you can cause, it can cause anxiety of depression. Resistance training also is pro-muscle, pro-tissue. Your body is trying, it actually starts to burn more calories as a result, um, and that just tends to feel good. If, when, it when a body becomes efficient with calories, and slows itself down, uh, as is the case with lots and lots of cardio, over time, uh, this is just my own observation, over time, that can start to make you feel a little bit depressed because your energy is lower. Your body's becoming more efficient with calories, burning less calories. You may find that you have less energy. Strength training, when done properly, is very invigorating for the body. And it's also complex. It requires you to be present more than other forms of exercise, which tend to be repetitive. You know, like if I'm riding a bike or walking. Yeah, sitting, sit, riding a bike for an hour <laughs> it could really make you sit in your depression a lot you more. You could sit yeah. in your looping thoughts. Yeah. But when you're lifting weights properly, you're. Especially strength training. Yeah, you got to pay attention. Yeah, you got to pay attention. Yeah, back squat 200 pounds and think about how depressed you are. Yeah, you know you're, you're That's focused. That's hard to do. And, and it's also extremely, um, uh, what's the word, uh, empowering. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. You know, if you go to the gym, let's say you're feeling down or whatever, but you're like, I'm willing myself to work out. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do it properly. Let's say you follow maps or you have a trainer so you know what you're doing is right. You go to the gym and let's say today I did, you know, 100 pounds uh, on the bench press or I did, you know, seven push-ups. Say I did seven push-ups. I come to the gym tomorrow. I did nine push-ups. Then I come back, you know, three days later, I did 12 push-ups. It's hard not to recognize the 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 connection between – the, the work mm -hmm. and the progress. It's very, very clear um, with strength training. I'm getting stronger. Yeah. And then, of I'm course, improving. you're improving. Yeah, and that makes you feel good you, you, because it, you, you're, you, you, hard work, result. That's like a great combination right there. Now, mm -hmm. I, I want to add to that. And again, uh, not a therapist by any means, although I've experienced um, feeling like this, especially in the last couple of years of you know, coming off the testosterone. And this was this is close to home for me. And one of the things, though, that I want to add to the point that Sal made is that uh, I do agree that strength training of all the things that uh, I was working on during this time were, was one of the, uh, the number one things that helped me through it. But I also had to um, be OK with the fact that I, I might go to the gym today and it may be all yoga, because here's the thing, when you get caught in a depression loop or have a ton of anxiety and stress going on in your life, 
and then you also know that a, a head a heavy you know squat session is ahead of you today sometimes i just didn't have it in me to do it and so i had to be okay with sometimes uh doing a workout that was uh, less strength focused and more recuperative or working in where maybe it was sauna and stretching that day or it was all mobility work or i just didn't quite have it in me to get after it and so then i would just chase a pump and call it a day uh it's okay that too but nothing i think will physically benefit you more in the gym than than strength training but also know that you know you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself that i've got to go in there and because that's hard sometimes when you're in that place to to get the the mustard to get up and go get after it uh like you know you can do and so i i had set for myself personal goals and i would recommend the same thing for a client that was going through this uh for me who was used to training you know, six, seven days a week consistently, I told myself, listen, if I can get it in there and I could give myself three good lift days, uh, of course, I want to, my goal is to go every day still. uh, But as long as I get two to three good lifting days, uh, that's an accomplished week for me. And so a lot of times I would go to the gym and it wouldn't be a, a hard, heavy day, but I'd still make sure that, you know, two or three days of the week I was doing that. Yeah, I'm definitely not a, uh, I'm going to put out a disclaimer as well, <laughs> but uh, I know that too, just a lot of times there's that 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 internal chatter and there's all this like excess of energy that needs to be expended that, uh, you, you know, your body a lot of times like it just wants to, to get rid of it. And, I, and that that feeling of I- exhaustion, a lot of times it helps to then, you know, like limit a lot of that excess amount of energy that's just stored in your body that like makes its way up into your thoughts. And yeah. I think that, you know, just just to be able to expel that uh, too, it definitely has its own benefits uh, on its own. Yeah, there, there's. When you look at exercise and you look at the literature on exercise, and this is just from my understanding in depression and anxiety, you have the acute uh, effects where right after the workout, you tend to feel a little bit of a mood lift and you feel a little bit better. When we look at strength training versus aerobic activity, they're pretty equal there with the acute effects. Now, the long-term effects, I'll argue, resistance training is better, mainly because of my experience training clients and seeing how strength training just has better long-term effects on people generally anyway. Mm-hmm. Again, it speeds up the metabolism. It's very individualized. You can uh, you can train your resistance training according to your goals, whereas with cardiovascular activity, you tend to be stuck in the same you know, repetitive motion or whatever. Um, it's pro-anabolic hormone. It's pro-tissue, which is you know, muscle. And so long-term is where I'll argue that strength training – it's also probably shines. I think it shines even more head to head, like you said. The first, I think that it's uh, pro posture, and we know the connection that posture has with like depression. That feedback, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Right. A lot of times when uh, a lot of times when you see someone who's depressed, you get to see it in their posture. Definitely, their head is down, they're slouched way forward. Uh, man, you get a great workout. How many of you ever walked out of the gym slouching over? You feel oh, no, your chest is up. You feel you're... more upright than yeah. you felt all day after a workout, and so and that you know uh, definitely has got to feed into uh, feeling better also. So I would make the case, Sal, that it's even better than cardio because you could run on a treadmill or slouch over a stairmaster for an hour, strengthen that slouching posture, right, and still yeah. get a, a dopamine rush. Uh, that's equivalent to what you got from uh, weight training, but then weight training, you're also getting the the benefits of uh, posture. So, uh, I, I think it definitely uh, surpass or su- supersedes uh, cardio in that case. 